Okay, this is Mr. Hill uh, back again with another algorithm. This is a short tutorial on how to do the partial quotients algorithm. Um, again, algorithm, don't let that word scare you. It's just a way of doing something, a set of steps that works every time. Um, the steps for this algorithm are pretty easy. They're divide, multiply, subtract. And you're going to repeat these steps until you get a remainder that is less than your divisor. Here, you want it. Uh, less than your divisor. Um, Alright, let's go ahead and get started. Now what's cool about this algorithm is it's a lot different. Uh, this is kind of what the traditional looks like if you watch the other video. But this is what partial quotients looks like. And we're going to do all our work off to the side here. We're going to do the quotient in parts and then I guess there is one last step. We have to put the parts together. So we're going to put this at the very end. Add parts together. And that's going to give us our whole quotient. We want to put all the parts together because we're doing our quotients in parts, which we kind of always do in any algorithm, but this one goes about it a little differently. So the way to think about this is we're going to think about the whole number, which I like. How many times does 6 go into 457? And before we get started, let's give you the uh, real-life uh, problem that would go with this. Um, the real-life problem that would go with this is... is is that I have 457 baseball cards. I want to sell them in a garage sale, but I want to sell them in groups of six. So I'm going to put them in bags, um, groups of six, and I need to know how many bags I need to make equal groups of six out of this big group of 457 cards. So rather than go to the store with my baseball cards and open up a package, and that'd be kind of a mess and I'd probably get in trouble, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and use this algorithm, figure out how many bags I need, and then I can go to Walmart or wherever and, and get some bags. So my first step is I want to think about, okay, six going into 457. How many groups of six can I get out of 457? Now just thinking about this, I'm going to have some friendly numbers and I'm going to write them down here. Um, tens are helpful, one hundreds are helpful, and I won't need thousands because um, I only go up to 457. But again, this continues. If you have really big numbers that you're dealing with, thousands can be great too. Um, but any of these numbers are very helpful for this algorithm, and I'll show you why. I don't want to do just start off one group of six. If I did one group of six and then one group, of, it would take forever to get through this 457. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump it up a little bit, and I'm going to do um, 10 groups. I know 10 groups of six. 10 times six is 60. Um, so again, this algorithm uses some mental math. It definitely takes a little bit more thinking. Um, you don't just go right through the steps and you got an answer. It does take some thinking. So I'm going to start off with 10 groups of 6. That's my divide step. I'm just going to write that off to the side here. And um, I'm going to now multiply. 10 times 6 would be 60. And I should probably actually write that 10 right there where I'm going to have my 60. That way I know that it's the 10 times the 6 gives me the 60. I'm going to subtract. And again, that subtract step is just to see what I have left. And I'm going to have quite a bit left here. Here i got to regroup. Um, I can do the cross this out and do the 3, or I can just think 45 minus 6. For me, that is a little bit quicker, because I can figure out that that's 39. But if you wanted to, to do this and do the 3 here, um, you're a little bit tight on space, and make this a 15, then either way you get 39 here. So. Um, I'm going to keep on doing this. I can keep on using 10s. Um, if I see that that's going to take a long time, though, I can speed it up. That's kind of nice about this this algorithm is that it, it takes however much time you want it to take. If you're only comfortable with grouping into 10s, it'll, it'll get the job done, but it will take some time. I'm going to speed it up a little bit, and I, I know that 60 and 60, I know that 6 and 6 is 12, so I know that 60 and 60 is 120. So I'm going to use, again, some mental math here. In this next group, I'm going to do a little bit bigger. 20 times 6. Again, that was my divide step. I just did my 20. I'm going to do 20 times 6. That's my multiply. I'm going to get 120. It's a little bit bigger. should go a little faster. Um, and I'm going to subtract now. I'm going to get 7 here. I'm going to get 7. I didn't have to do any regrouping, which is nice. And again, what's nice about this is once you do the mental math, I know that 20 times 6 is 120. So if I want to, I can keep on reusing that whole cycle of it makes my divide really easy. I know it's 20 again. My multiply, I already know that that's 120 again. 
and I'll subtract. And once you get going with some mental math, and again, this is still a little bit bigger than 120, but, but what I'm trying to do is get smaller than the 6. I want to get to where my leftovers are smaller than the 6, and that's my remainder. So um, I can do this one again, actually. I'm going to divide 20. I'm going to multiply 20 times 6. And that's going to give me 120. And then I can subtract. And now I'm down to 37, which I should be able to figure that out pretty easily. Again, the reason this is called partial quotients is because I just did 10 groups of 6, 20 groups of 6, 20 groups of 6 again, 20 groups of 6 again. And so these are all parts of my quotient. I've, I'm dealing with them in little pieces, and then at the end I'm going to put them all back together. So again, I'm going to extend this line down a little bit. And I know that, if again, you want to know your multiplication facts. Um, 5 times 6 is 30, 6 times 6 is 36. If I go any more than that, if I go 7 times 6, it's 42, and that's higher, so that'd be a problem. So I'm going to do 6, there's my divide step again, 6 times 6 is 36, that's the uh, multiply, I'm going to subtract and get 1, so I know my remainder is 1, so up here I can put my remainder is 1, I know that, but now what you got to do is you do got to go back through and and add these parts together. Once you get down to your remainder, you got less than six. You can't make any more groups of six. Um, now you want to put your parts together. These are all parts of your quotient here. So again, I can do this mentally. Um, 10 plus 20, I know is 30. Plus 20 more would be 50. Plus 20 more would be 76. So I would get uh, 76 there. And we'll go ahead and put those together. I can do it in my mind, or if I want to, I can just go ahead and draw, write them out. So I could go, if I wanted to, if you're having trouble with that, this works too. Just add them up. I get 6, and I get 7, 76. So my answer would be 76. Remainder of 1 would be my solution to this problem. Again, that's the partial quotients. Your, um, your steps are right here. Divide, multiply, subtract. And then at the very end, you got to add the parts together because you're doing parts of your quotient. But again, this is kind of sort of a uh, freestyle algorithm. You can kind of, I mean, there's tons of different solutions that you could do here. If you want to do 10 down the whole way, you might have found 20 right away. You could, there's a, a lot of different ways this algorithm would work, but it does work every time. Um, and that's the partial quotients algorithm.